We just made it to our next hotel called Villa Laura and I'm very excited because it is right next to the church. Like it literally looks over the church in the center of town. And the town is Ribarina. This beautiful, tiny little town on the edge of Riviera Grande, which is the second biggest town on the island. So we're really excited for this cute little hotel. It was easy to find because yeah. it is pink and big. Big. Oh, wow. <laughs> and by big, we mean bigger than the last two hotels we stayed in. Average American home size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beautiful today but that's not stopping us we're gonna go see this lake Lagoa do Congro yeah that one and um, yeah it's supposed to be really pretty beautiful pictures and leaves but it's also easy to forget to actually stand and enjoy it. And it's so beautiful and peaceful, especially with that misty cloud coming over the mountain. Nature is amazing. Okay, so we were looking for a church and we popped into this farm. Yeah, just to ask for directions. And we ended up watching some inseminations, <laughs> some milking. We got lots of pictures of cows and calves and learned all about the farming on this island. So, you know, something that most tourists don't experience is actual life on that island. This is real life on this island. Um, I mean, farming is huge, especially with cows, all through the Azores. And so I really feel like we got a feel for a day in the life. <laughs> yeah. Fish. Hey. That's a sweet little boy. Yeah. <laughs> You're sweet. You gonna grow up to be big and strong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, pode fazer confusão. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. So they have here the baby cows, and, and on this side, bulls. yeah, the baby bulls over here. <laughs> hey, got, little bulls. <laughs> ha. <Got your> food? <laughs> Leave the fallen, fend for yourself. Cold and broken on the ground. <laughs> You're so sweet. Yes. One day old. Oh. One December, when I was it's so old. delicate, I remember like today. You surrendered to separate and keep and fate and shatter so getting the, the little calf to, to call out, that then calls all the mama cows for the milking. Oh, here they come. <laughs> Jernan? Uh, no, not Jernan. <laughs> this is a social one. Jesses are very bansas. Very docile. Yes, very docile. Machinery was stealing your soul away. You felt the aching in your bones. Don't do this, gravity. For golden scenery, the crushing weight would suffocate and drive you from your heavy. We were trying to find.
find this church and we got really lost. So Herbie said, the next human I see, I'm going to ask for directions because we just kept passing cows. We found a human and he invited us in to see his farm and took us for a ride over to his cows. It's been the coolest day. <laughs> So uh, we're going to see them milking and inseminating some cows next. And in the meantime, we get to watch these little newborn calves. Uh, one of the cows, is, or three of the cows are getting inseminated. And then they're going to be milking them. And the inseminator guy is here now. And all the cows are here too. <laughs> She did not expect to see us right there. <laughs> oh, they put the bands on them so they know yeah. who's who. It was just awesome. The guy like brought us in, and, like showed us like you know the catalog where he actually orders the uh, the different sperm from different bulls, and just a, a whole side of uh, dairy farming that I never even imagined. It was quite educational. So now we're gonna head back out. Go. He, he gave us directions to the church that we were looking for. <laughs> so we're gonna go there now. Yes. And. Uh, that's gonna be that. <laughs> so what was really interesting was the, uh, you figure it's a very small population of cows on this island, so it's very easy to start inbreeding. And I, I kind of pictured the bulls had a great life like at their setup. Apparently it's not. So everything is completely controlled. Uh, the cows, apparently it's a nine month gestation period. And then after they give birth, 70 days later, they re-inseminate them. Uh, there's a full catalog with all the paperwork of each and every cow, their whole lineage, to make sure you don't get issues with inbreeding. And so when you see the cows, they have those little earrings with the numbers. That number respond, or corresponds to that entire cow's life and, and just everything. And when the number is taken or put in their ear, they also take a DNA sample just to verify that that is the cow that it's supposed to be in. And just, it's so... Uh, in depth that we and have, organized and, and yeah and so organized it's it's impressive and I also learned cows live a very long life here at least yeah uh, yeah here at least so the cows they'll produce uh, at a year and a half old uh, they they get fertilized and then you know they have the first calf by the age of two and then they start producing milk and then the whole cycle of nine months and 70 days continues. So once they stop producing milk, once they're no longer able to have calves, that's when they become beef. And that can be from age 8 to age 10. It, it yeah, varies. In that area. It, the more milk you produce, the faster you run out and the less of a life you live if you're a cow. This is... I can wash off my feet here <laughs> from all the cow pee I stepped in. <laughs>
We're currently in the town called Noreste. It's the northeast corner of the island. It used to be an old whaling port. And it's just so picturesque here. So tons of people have told us we have to come see this place. It's very pretty. It really is pretty. We're gonna take a little walk and then move on to the next town. We were at Nordese in the beginning of today and we are currently taking this windy, windy road through the forest, through the island, and we're gonna end up in Povosau. Povo So, the reason that Maddie is only stepping on the dark stones is because when it rains or when it's wet, like right now, the white stones are incredibly slippery and the black stones have really good traction. We were driving along and passed signs for a wheat museum and we're intrigued, so we have come here. Here's our little wheat museum. People, but so far away. Today's our last full day here in Sao Miguel and we are hitting all those little spots that we haven't had a chance yet to see and thankfully the weather is being amazing today. So first up, this. You guys back at home get to enjoy this with all the beauty of it and without the smell. But if you're curious, it smells like rotting eggs. I mean, it's really cool, but it's terrible smelling. <laughs> Whoa, listen to it gurgling. Time to put in the spaghetti.
I find just a tad frustrating about all these places on all of the islands of the Azores is just a general lack of explanation when you get to a church or a some a monument like this there there isn't much information available if any in this case oh it's raining um and so you really do have to like do your research because I like to know what I'm seeing when I'm looking at so we'll find out about Castello Branco and we'll tell you about it when we know Unfortunately, there is little to no information available about this tower online, and despite my research, I found out pretty much nothing except that it's a watchtower uh, used to possibly warn nearby villages about pirates invading or other enemies. It did have a beautiful view over Furness, and it was well worth the stop, though I wish I could have found more about it to tell you. two days it has just been raining and foggy and misty and all of these lookouts look out onto white and you don't see anything and then we decided let's go out for dinner and it it's just it's so clear today like it's or this afternoon it's just beautiful and, and now we can see all these lookouts that we've driven past a bunch and just there's no point in stopping at them and now they are just gorgeous What are your thoughts? I can't wait to put these pictures on Instagram. They're amazing. I think the shutter button on my camera is going to break off. <laughs> the lookout where we were the other night. Um, where we saw the beautiful sunset it was right over there at the tip of that peninsula. This is our last night here, so it's pretty fitting that we get a view like this after a day of mist and rain and clouds. It's just really magical and a fantastic way to sum up our Sao Miguel experience. I just like looking out at this view right now, there's buildings and cities and everything. It's just I wonder what it was like when the first explorers got here. I mean, they sailed out from Portugal. They had no idea that any land was out there in the ocean. They just went out in search. And then when they came across this island, like, just, it's, I just can't even imagine what it was that they saw and how they felt. Like, it's beautiful now, but imagine when it was pristine and untouched. Just amazing. Now I gotta ask, it's gorgeous here and we've been to four islands now. Now, not including the ones we haven't seen, because that's a cop-out answer, but of the ones we've seen, if you could only revisit one, which would it be? Like, just for a visit. Yeah, just a visit, like a week. If you had one week okay. on the four islands of Fayal, Flores, Tercera, and São Miguel, which would you do? It's hard. Really floatish. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, so... That's funny. Yeah, I mean, well, floatish, you can see it in a day. Or two. So if you have a week, you're bound to get good weather to see the whole island. <laughs> like, here in a week, you're not going to see it all. For me, it was just like a very romantic island. It was yeah, just like... so natural so natural and everything was like super close together and just the towns were like adorable and picturesque i don't know i think i just that Flodish is probably my favorite touristy island we've been to here 
Yeah. As it from as a tourist. As a tourist. Living I just love Angra. <laughs> yeah. I live in Angra, I think. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, like Ponta Delgada has the big city, which is nice. So, like, for a living standpoint, Ponta Delgada has a city, has a mall, has movie theaters, which is something that... It's got, like, yeah. more civilization. Yeah, more, more like modern conveniences that Americans are used to, Yeah. right? Some of the smaller towns on Sao Miguel, though, are, like, I would live there, like Provo Sao or even Furnash. Yeah, they, they are like, really nice. And, and they're, like, anywhere you go, you always feel safe. Like, there's no yeah. issue. It's just so beautiful. And it's, like, tiny towns, and everyone knows everyone. It's So maybe I'd nice. live on this one because it's so big. It's much bigger. I don't know. The nice thing with, like, Tercera is... It's all walkable. Yeah, like, <laughs> and the, the distance from, like, say you're on one side of the island and you have dinner reservations on the other side of the island, it's like a half hour. You're there. It's no big deal. You know, I really, like... I'm I'm having seen Ponte Delgada and like the main marinas and stuff here. I'm really glad that we were in Tercera. Yeah. Because uh, it's just so much more manageable, especially it's without quieter. a car. Yeah, quieter, more man, safer. Don't have to. We don't even lock our boat half the time. Yeah. So. Actually, we don't lock our boat while we're there because there's no. Yeah, issues. the boat's locked when we leave, but not while we're on the island. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the other big thing, like, Horta is awesome and very set up for tourists and it's walkable and all that. But there's so much traffic through there. Where yeah. Angra is kind of sleepy. Like, a boat comes in, you get the norm. It's, it's nice. It's like, a, it's like a little community. That is cow poop. And it smells thus. On this, our final night in Sao Miguel, we are going to the same restaurant we went to the first night we were here in Sao Miguel. Uh, it was really yummy and affordable, and in our old little neighborhood in Ponta Delgada. So we're doing this last trail hike. Madge, do you want to... We're oh. doing a trail that is right by the airport, <laughs> because our plane leaves at 3.30, and it is currently 11.30. we got a couple hours. So we're hour. going to just do this, see, get some beautiful sights in one last time before we head back to the States for the first time in three or four months. Look at that cliff down there. And the huge rocks in the water. This is really pretty, babe. Yeah. Oh. So we'll just hike for like 45 minutes, 40 minutes, somewhere around there, turn around, and then head back to the car, and then hop on the plane. And that's it. Kind of. Thanks for everyone that's going to be around us, because we just went hiking. <laughs> Man, look at that. Got a lava I didn't expect to play with you. Well, <laughs> the horse carrying the batteries. We can say that that was an electric horse. <laughs> With its battery bank mounted. <laughs> okay, so this has been a lot of descent. The cliff part wasn't too bad because we weren't on the edge of the cliff. It's going to be a lot of uphill coming back. Yeah. But it's good because we're about to spend hours in a plane and then a car. I think the only access to this town is by this road we're walking on.
just growing on the side of this cliff. Ooh, we made it. It was extremely uphill. But we actually made it through most of the trail, so I'm proud of us, and it's time to go to the airport. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below. This is real life. Oh, mother. What was it? Uh, a huge puffle. Ow, mother. <laughs> Watch out for that. Low bridge. <laughs>